you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil, spreading normalcy in Jammu and Kashmir and bringing it at par with the rest of India has been one of the central projects of the Modi government. Three years ago, it initiated that mission by abrogating the contentious Article 370, allowing central laws to take root in the Union territory, expanding the crackdown on terror and boosting the development drive. The man who made the government's case in Parliament, Home Minister Amit Shah, continues to lead that mission in the Union territory. While addressing a rally in Rajori, the Home Minister promised reservation to the Pahari community in education and jobs as a scheduled tribe. This was a pre-election promise may aimed at widening the BJP's support base. If implemented, this quota will be the first instance of a linguistic group earning reservation in India. The Home Minister has said that the abrogation of Article 370 has opened new roads of development as terror incidents have decreased while students have taken up books instead of stones. Shah also said the centre has cleared over 56,000 crore worth of investments in the last three years. This saffron blitz in Jammu and Kashmir has addressed a long-standing demand of a community that comprises of over 20% of the population of the Union Territory. It also comes, as sources say, state elections could be announced next year. While the Gupkar Alliance calls the move divisive and a vote bank ploy, the question emerges, is this Vikas or appeasement? So let me get you an overview of the significance of this move to empower the crucial Pahari community of Jammu and Kashmir. Remember, they have always nursed a wound against Kashmiri regional parties because they were not granted the ST status, unlike that status that have been granted to the Gujars and Bakirwals, which was done decades ago. It's a social and linguistic minority group that lives in the mountainous area. They are primarily found in the hilly areas of the Poonch Rajori area, which is Mirpur, and in some other parts of the valley, which includes Bara, Baramulla, Kupwara, and Uri. As of 2018, about 1 million Paharis lived in the region. They usually, as I said, live in rural areas and their activities are largely agricultural and cattle driven. Let me rewind for you. On 29th May 2011, the then Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir had written a letter to the Prime Minister then pleading for granting ST status. The letter in fact mentioned that Pahari people, the Paharis, are socio-economically very backward and are facing the brunt of being inhabitants of the line of control. There's also a Pirzada 
Amin Committee, which had recommended clearly that there is need to mainstream them because what they were witnessing was that there is vulnerability attached to their socio-economic conditions and they were clearly completely isolated. Is this move then keeping in mind the need for mainstreaming a community which has so far been marginalized? Why weren't political parties who had so far represented Jammu and Kashmir, who had been in power so far, not able to realize the aspirations of this crucial constituency or community? Joining me on the show, Sanju Varma, national spokesperson of the BJP, Arti Tiku, founder and editor-in-chief of the New Indian. We also have advocate Nilofar Masood, uh, who is spokesperson of the national conference, and Ankur Sharma is the president of Ik Jut. Jammu party. Mr. Masood, uh, Ms. Masood, I'm going to begin with you. Why were the aspirations of such groups overlooked and ignored for so long? Why should a community continue to live on the margins? Uh, Maria, let me remind you, it is not for the first time we have been seeking for the reservation of these people. In fact, Jammu Kashmir National Conference uh, is the custodian of the interests of all the segments of uh, JNK society. And if you remember, um, the matter was, in fact, of the with respect to the reservation of the Pahari people, it was taken by the Dr. Farooq Abdullah with the late uh, Mrs. Indra Gandhi. Not only this, in the year 2014, Umar Abdullah Sahab, he in fact uh, vehemently wanted that the reservation should be given to Pahari people. In fact, it was only because of this reason, 5% reservation was granted to the Pahari students in uh, professional and technical colleges in uh, JNK. So the move is not new. We have been vehemently fighting for it. And if it is granted, we just wanted one thing, that at the same time, the uh, reservation which has been granted to Gujarat and Bak Bakarwas, that should not be disturbed. Number one. What gives you what, the sense uh, that it is being disturbed? Uh, Sanju will respond to this. Sanju, go ahead. Just give me a few seconds. Yeah, yeah, Maria. Yes, Sanju. Thank you. Hmm. Maria, uh, you know, I think... Um, Mr. Amit Shah, uh, at his massive rally in uh, Rajori, uh, made a couple of very pertinent points. And uh, I uh, just want to add to what you said in your, in your introduction. Um, if you recall, on the 14th of March this year, uh, you know, the Delimitation Commission made a very important recommendation that uh, Jammu should have, uh, you know, going forward 43 seats and uh, Kashmir Division 47 seats. And on the 5th of May 2022, we actually... Uh, implemented the uh, recommendation made by the delimitation commission and the uh, law ministry actually said that uh, you know this will now be a bona fide arrangement with uh, Jammu at 43 and uh, Kashmir division at 47 seats. The reason I'm mentioning this is because there has also been a provision to ensure that nine seats are reserved clearly and categorically for the scheduled tribes, the ST community. Now the Gujars and Bakarwas, uh, you know, in 2022, earlier uh, this year, they got political reservation. Uh, and, you know, a couple of years back, uh, there was a 10% reservation uh, for them in uh, professional bodies and government schools and colleges and government institutions. So they have been pleading with Manoj Sinha and the central government that we do not want our 10% to be touched. Hmm. And Mr. Amit Shah has made it very clear that while the Pahari community will be given, uh, you know, the status of uh, a scheduled tribe yes. in line with what their demands are, this in no way encroaches upon the 10% reservation that is already available to the Gujars and Bakarwals. So I think it is crystal clear you will now have Pahari community being designated scheduled tribe as well, but without yes. any encroachment on the facilities and reservation that the Gujars and Bakarwas yes. already enjoy. Okay, Sanju, the point also that has been made here uh, largely is that uh, the, by the Gujars and Bakarwals is that the Paharis never face discrimination or ostracization that they have been facing for years. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, the most important point uh, that needs to be understood is uh, post the abrogation of Article 370, if you recall, it's not just the Gujars and Bakarwals who were politically marginalized prior to 
August 5th and August 6th of 2019 because they could never be a part of the overall electoral process. Even the Valmiki community could never aspire to be a part of the electoral process. So I think what the abrogation of Article 370 has done is that it has mainstreamed the erstwhile uh, marginalized communities, be it Valmikis, be it Gujas, be it Bakarwas, and now for that matter, the Pahari okay. community okay. without trying to disturb status quo in terms of okay. reservations Fine. already available. Fine. Um, uh, Arti, there have been multiple commissions which have examined this issue of the quota and the recommendations have always been about Pahadis, Bakarwals and Gujars. All of them should be given ST quota benefits. Then why did it take particularly for Pahadis to get their due today? Well, Maria, to begin with, the politics of Jammu and Kashmir in the last 70 years, uh, starting from 1947, was Kashmir centric. It was always about Kashmiri Muslim leadership. It was always about Kashmiri Muslims rather than any other community. In fact, uh, it would be absolutely correct to say that uh, Kashmiri Muslim leadership in the first seven decades of uh, our independence was highly communal. It was xenophobic. It was ethnically discriminatory against other groups, whether it were Ladakhis whether it were uh, Kashmiri Hindus, whether it were Jammu Dogras, whether it were Gujars, uh, Bakarwals and Pahadis, they all faced discrimination by the successive governments which were headed by Kashmiri Muslim uh, political leadership of the Abdullahs and the Muftis. So for anyone to say that, you know, uh, we were actually fighting for the rights of Gujars, Bakarwals and Pahadis, it's actually a huge lie. Pahadis did not get their due because it did not politically suit a national conference and PDP because they were always focused about their votes in Kashmir. Whereas Pahadis are largely, actually, you pointed it out yourself, in the Jammu, in the upper reaches of Jammu region. And yes, Jammu region has Arthi, since you have made Ladakh, that point, it was in April 1991 when the Gujar Bakarwal got the ST status and when the militancy was at its peak. So the point that I bring, and I'm going to take that uh, thread that has been, uh, you know, point uh, that has been made by Aarti here to um, Nilofar. Nilofar, if Bakarwals and Gujars can, then what stopped successive governments, and they were largely either of NC or of PDP, to really give Pahadis what they should have got? Uh, I have already, uh, already also said that the matter was being taken by the NC government with uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Ernest Wild, Prime Minister of India. Then subsequently it was taken by Mr. Omar Abdullah with the... Uh, no, but Manmukhan then what Singh. really happened? But it couldn't go through. It couldn't go through. I they, don't know they, they were supposed to be... They were named Gandhi. famously as the guardians of the borders. See, see, see. And then they were not that recognized. Is why the reason, that is why the reason we wanted the reservation for them that they should be categorized as ST. We had been eminently fighting for that. One important point which I want to make here is that um, uh, Mr. Amit Shah has today said that the recommendations of uh, Justice J.D. Sharma Commission are going to be taken on account. What I want to uh, say here or convey here is that it does not only speak about reservation of the Paharis only. There are other recommendations also with respect to uh, Tekhwal people, with respect to Badrava people, with respect to grave digging people. So all those you recommendations know, are... I, I also think what, what is happening out. here is, Aarti, is, is rather generalization and a narrative which is about everybody is the same, everybody is not getting it, rather than looking at communities which are linguistic, they have challenges... You know, particularly with this one, because they uh, they live in the Pir Panjal Valley, uh, which comprises of Rajori, Poonch districts. They should have been recognized long ago. Are they, why, why did multiple governments of Jammu and Kashmir fail to do so? Uh, Maria, as I said, the leadership, the political leadership in Jammu and Kashmir has always been about Kashmir. It was Kashmir centric. All the policies were formulated towards the Kashmiri Muslim vote bank in the Kashmiri speaking valley. 
all the regions, all the areas where you did not have Kashmiri speaking people, especially Kashmiri Muslim uh, speaking people, they were completely ignored, completely neglected. That is why Pahadis did not get their due. Even as, you know, uh, uh, one of the speakers mentioned, Valmikis did not get uh, their due. In fact, I want to point out this fact that it was the national conference as well as the PDP who were hell-bent on actually disqualifying women of uh, Jammu and Kashmir uh, to get disqualified from the state subject. Imagine the kind of men the kind of mentality, the mindset, the illiberal parochial view uh, they have about other communities. So it was always was about they the themselves country. and their fief. So I would say that, you know, National Conference and PDP harmed okay. Jammu and Kashmir's okay. secular plural okay, then, fabric then, for the then last seven what decades. Does it do? They, in fact, ripped apart. They ripped apart the harmony that could have uh, been in Jammu and Kashmir. And it was, it was these policies, these discriminatory policies against other communities, other ethnicities, because for somehow they assumed and they tried to project that Kashmiri Muslim community's identity is very superior to everybody else's. Okay. Okay, there then, has then, been this superiority then, complex. Okay, I'm, I'm going Kashmiri to come Muslim back to leadership. everyone because I have Ankur also on the panel, Arti, who has not said a word. Um, Ankur, what does it do to the calculation and arithmetic of other political parties after this outreach by Amit Shah? So therefore, we need to, before I answer this question, we need to understand who are the people who are now getting benefited under this ST status. Hmm. Uh, Pahadis. Pahadis would constitute 90% Muslims as beneficiaries as far as this quota is concerned. Hmm. You talked about Uyghurs and Bakarwals and then Gaddis and Sippis also enjoy ST status as on date. So nine, more than 95% of Gujar, Bakarwals, Gaddis and Sippis, they are Muslims. So we are necessarily talking about Muslim reservation increase in muslim re reservation as far as now ut of jnk is concerned now this is like the same policy where in the ut of jnk the majority community from the last more than 70 years has been enjoying uh, benefits under the minority schemes despite a supreme court judgment against it that's number one which was my personal case in supreme court in 2016 which was decided uh, on 12th march 2018 and also in violation of clause 7 of the implementation guidelines of the schemes which are being run directly by the, by the Prime Minister's office. It says that in JNK Muslims will not get minority benefits, still they are getting. So we are seeing a pattern. Minority rights are being given to Muslims who are a majority community in violation of the law. As far as ST status is concerned, 90% of the total beneficiaries, even under the Pahadi category, are Muslims. The Pahadis of Udhampur district, Kathua district, other districts which are Hindu majority districts, they have not been taken into consideration. That's one. Second, the like the BJP spokesperson in the introductory remarks said hmm. that this quota will not encroach upon the 10% quota already given to Gujars and Bakarwals. Yes. So I am afraid the as on date the existing quota of reservations is more than 50 to 53 percent. I was reading it 54 percent and in direct recruitments probably it has reached 60 percent. Now I do not know if this is going to withstand judicial scrutiny. Because you have to balance 50% is the breach, Indra Sahani's judgment, etc. subsequent judgments. That's I right. do not know how they are going to do uh, go ahead about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of questions that are there in that um, answer and opening comments that has come uh, from Ankur. Uh, Sanju, will you please respond to it, particularly whether it will stand the test of judicial scrutiny? Because it has breached uh, the 50% no. mark of reservation. Uh, you know, uh, Maria, hmm. uh, the delimitation commission, uh, which was uh, headed by uh, ex-justice Ranjana Desai, first and foremost, let's be very clear, it is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. And by and large, whatever the delimitation commission has said, it cannot be challenged in the courts until and unless, you know, there is a great defiance of the 84th Amendment in the Constitution. The limited point is this, 40% of Gujars and Bakarwals are Muslims, 90% of Pahadis are Muslims, but when the Modi government decided to give the scheduled tribe status earlier to Gujars and Bakarwals and now to Pahadis, it is based on the fact that it is a separate ethnic community which is in sync with the definition of what scheduled tribe is by the constitution, whereas 
people who are up in arms against the 10% reservation to bakkarwals gujjars and now to pahadis including the national conference have said how can you give st status to the pahadis because pahadis are just a religious and a linguistic conglomerate they are not a ethnic community yes. so the fight here is whether pahadi falls under the definition of an ethnic community or whether pahadis fall under the definition of a religious and linguistic conglomerate hmm. and the gd sharma commission has clearly said that pahadis are not a linguistic conglomerate they are not a religious conglomerate they are a ethnic community and hence they should be classified as scheduled tribes so the debate is over okay so i i just wanted to come in because i just wanted to correct one thing it is not the delimitation commission which has recommended this st status in favor of pahadis that's number 1 i said one. gd sharma committee gd you sharma stop. committee the delimitation you... commission has allocated 9 seats to the scheduled tribes that is what i said but it is the gd sharma committee which has been the guiding force behind this entire exercise and the national conference uh, you know representative nilufar earlier said i support pahadis getting uh, scheduled tribe status but her yeah. leader omar abdullah and farooq abdullah have been making exactly the opposite noises in the valley so i think nilufar yeah. comes here and plays the good cop and omar abdullah there is playing the bad cop and between them they are trying to mislead the public all right so this 9% recommendation in favor of st political reservation is not going to be nine challenged seats. i said what i nine what seats. i said not 9% not 9 seats problem is your, your, the i am trying to clarify one thing i am saying that that if you do not encroach upon the already existing 10% quota in favor of sts hmm. you are going to add additional quota to the reservation which is going to already breach the 50% mark which has been set by the uh, by, by honorable the supreme court already the total reservation in jnk is nearly 54% if you add beyond by going beyond the 10% quota which is already allocated for the sts that is going to be challenged in the court not the delimitation commission in fact the delimitation commit commission has committed biggest fraud in the history of the country by conducting delimitation of fraud and fudged 2011 census the bjp's official position is also this that 2011 census were fraud and fudged anti jammu anti hindu okay, anti nation i have just enough time for arti tiku arti tiku over to kashmir yes. and Ending over. Sanju will be continuing with me for the second debate, but thirty uh, seconds to you, Arti. Well, uh, I see. Uh, I see that you know Ankit uh, is um, uh, somehow not happy with this uh, um, reservation for Pahadis. It seems that it's uh, somehow upset him. But I don't. Uh, I don't really agree with his point of view. I think uh, Pahadis for a very very long time. It's a you know. It's a secondary issue. What percentage of reservations will be given, and what will be the maths? What will be the overall average? That's a separate issue. But Pahadis for a very long time have uh, been calling for, have been asking for reservations and for the ST status. And I think uh, um, uh, your other speaker, I think, did the BJP spokesperson rightly pointed out. that uh, the gd uh, sharma commission ha- did call them a scheduled tribe they are not a linguistic uh, conglomerate they are not a communal group so i think ankit probably is trying to see them as a muslim group uh, i don't think that is the issue All here right. they pahadis in themselves are a yes. scheduled tribe yes and, uh, i think the, the point here is in a good that, call it's it's yes. a progressive move yes. it's a progressive move yes and it has taken so long why didn't uh, governments in the past those were state governments do anything for this if there was a talk that was initiated and recommendations of multiple commissions were there that had done the survey what stopped them from going ahead and implementing the recommendations thank you so much for joining us arti tiku advocate nilofar and ankur sharma we are slipping into a short break coming up would be a face off on Karnataka what is really happening there is a poster war which has escalated in pole bound state